Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I'm going to make a real informal video today. I'm going to clip a couple segments together that I have shot for a group page on Facebook. And I do a lot of short videos of some live stuff for Facebook only that never goes to YouTube. And I did a couple segments for the More and Knife group that I'm going to piece together and make a video for you guys today. Hopefully you'll enjoy these couple tips and tricks that have to do with more knives. Stay with me. So let's have a quick discussion about sharpening stones for a second. I want to tell you why I prefer to carry a small pocket stone versus carrying some type of a card that's got diamond grid on it or something like that that you see often nowadays. When I'm at home, I prefer to use more of a Japanese whetstone to sharpen my tools and my knives with. But in the field, I carry some type of a small pocket stone similar to any of these, or the one that I have on my neck, which is made by Wazoo Survival, which is basically a copy of a Viking style pendant whetstone. And you can carry something like this just as easy, but the key is to use water on these and not oil. Because in the field, water is gonna be much easier to come by and you really can't go back once you put oil on one of these stones, you can't really go back to water. But if you use water on it all the time, you can always go to oil if that's what you choose to do. Now, the one that I like the best for field use is the one that I carry on my website. And I carry very few sharpening stones on my website. And I think this is the only one I carry that's a pocket stone. And the reason it's the only one I carry is because I think it's the best. It has multiple surfaces on it from a round for sharpening the inside bevel of a hook knife to flat and different types of angles here where I can sharpen knife blades or axes and things like that. It also has a fish hook groove in it here to sharpen fish hooks with. And it's not real big, doesn't take up a lot of room. It's got a lanyard hole drilled through it so it's easy to hang on a pack or hang on a piece of equipment when I'm not using it. And it works well that way. Now here's the reason that I say stones are better. All of my mentality when it comes to bushcraft and survival revolves around multifunctionality and if we are going to use our knife again going back to that high carbon steel argument to start a fire and we can't find a hard stone but we have to be carrying a sharpening stone that is in effect a hard stone it's got to be harder than the knife or it wouldn't sharpen or hone the blade so we can take one of these small pocket stones and I'll use one here that I don't care too much about in case I damage it because you may chip out this stone, but in an emergency, that doesn't matter. But now if I have a good high carbon steel blade like this Bushcraft Black, I should be able to effectively take my charred material, pin it down like this and use the edge of this stone here to drive sparks onto my charred material. Well, lots of people ask me, they say, Dave, why do you prefer your knife to have a 90 degree spine? And the reason for that is really twofold. Number one, it's for conservation of my blade resource. Because if I'm going to create fine shavings of some kind to use for fire material, I can do it with the blade of my knife, and that's going to dull the edge eventually. If I have a 90 degree spine, I can use this knife very similar to a spoke shave to create those fine shavings with that spine. And just by turning a piece of fat wood corner to corner like this and rotating it, I can create those fine shavings and then just use the blade if I get one that's hanging up on there I can run that chip off and then go back to pulling those fine shavings off again and putting them in a pile. Now, that's the first reason for that 90 degree spine is so that I have a fine shaving and shaping device. And it's not only good for fire making, but it's also good for things like making primitive arrows, for doing woodworking, 
and smoothing any rough cuts that I make with my knife, just like you would with a cabinet scraper or a spoke shaving device if you're doing fine woodwork. And once I've scraped myself a pile of those shavings, now I have something viable to use for fire starting. But again, we'll go back to that 90 degree spine again because most people that I see using their blade to scrape a ferrocerium rod will use very close to the knife handle to scrape that rod. And this first one third of the blade is the major part of the blade you're gonna use for fine carving tasks. So why would you wanna dull that with your ferro rod if you wanna conserve that resource? With that 90 degree spine, I can clean any residue off that spine from the shaving process and then I can use that to scrape the back of my ferrocerium rod to effectively start my fire. Just like that. Okay, so we talked about spine attributes of this blade to use it as a spoke shaving or cabinet scraping type device. The Garberg also has an exposed tang on the back side where the full tang runs through the handle and that also has a good sharp 90 degree edge on it. For me the advantage to this is not for doing this necessarily because you don't have much surface area like you do here to work a larger piece of wood or manipulate it around to get a good hard edge. You have a very short surface area here, but the advantage to this comes in with things like bark. And what I have here is just tulip poplar bark. You could do the same thing with cedar bark. You could do the same thing with birch bark. And a lot of guys that I see processing bark in this manner will take their knife and they'll scrape it with the blade. They'll scrape that bark with the blade. The advantage to this Garberg of having that hard butt on the butt sticking out, I guess, of the spine here on the back side is that I can use that to drag across barks. Try to get this so you can see it in the camera. I'm left handed, so it's a little bit difficult. But you can drag that across to expose and bring up those fine fibers within the inner bark where it connects to the outer bark, just like this. And I can bring that material up very easily to create those fine feathered shavings that I want for fire starting. So I can go from both directions here so I can catch it on camera. And get myself a pile of that material. And now, again, I can use the spine of my knife for fire starting to scrape down and remove material from that rod into that bark material. And again, if I have a bigger pile, I'm gonna have a better chance of success, but you saw it flame up right away. All right, so again, that's just another attribute of the Garberg that makes it effective as a bushcraft tool. Okay guys, well I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me today for this quick video, a couple tips or tricks to do with more knives. I appreciate your views and your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks guys.